question for today, guys. What is your favorite mod? What is the favorite modification you've made to your car? Leave it in the comment section below. Let me know what it was and why. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel, Speed Culture Studios. Thank you for stopping in. My favorite modification, although the wheels and suspension really gave the car an aggressive look and it totally changed how it felt, and I love them. And I love how the exhaust sounds, and you'll see in the clips coming up. Uh, it's really beautiful, really nice tone, really aggressive, yet tame. I, I love it. I love it. But I'd say what this video is about and what my favorite modification has been so far has got to be these Hotchkiss sway bars. It has been a super busy day already today. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Got the dog to the vet. Got the wife's Jeep taken in for some uh, warranty work. Uh, got a loaner car. Now I'm heading to Charlotte, North Carolina to see the guys at Soho Motorsports. That is a totally different video, but I'm pumped to make this video because I finally got to test these Hotchkiss sway bars out in the mountains of North Carolina and I got some pretty good footage. Some good footage, and I got a few things to say about the sway bars, so I wanna go over it. I will tell you that, you know, I just recently got this GoPro, and I've been testing out some different angles, and some stuff turned out and some stuff didn't, I'll say. Um, some of the best driving, some of the, uh, you know, the open roads early in the morning when I first got to the mountains, I was able to really hit the corners hard, uh, but I was trying out the head mount from the GoPro and I thought I was low enough in the seat and had a good enough angle, but it turned out a lot of it, a lot of it was uh, getting the visor and the headliner as well. So I don't really like the angle that much, but I'll share some of that footage. Uh, and then unfortunately the exterior footage I got, um, the car sounds great and you'll see, and you'll see some of the roads, but unfortunately I was behind some slower traffic. So it was really frustrating as well. So I wasn't able to take the corners as hard as I wanted to, uh, but you still get, you still get a feel. So, so anyway, what I want to do is show you that footage, and rather than break it up with a bunch of clips of me talking, I'm just going to kind of do a little voiceover review of the Hotchkiss Sway Bars and kind of how the car performed as well with everything in combination. It's the first time I've had the car in the mountains with uh, suspension, tires, and Sway Bars, and the new exhaust. So I kind of want to go over the entire driving experience. So thanks for watching. Um, make sure you watch the whole thing because we talk a lot about a lot. But uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate your support very, very much. Here we go. As we got into a little bit of elevation here, the air cooled and we got into some fog. It was really kind of cool, actually. back it's actually the first time I've heard the exhaust from outside of the car. I already put on about 15 or 20 miles in the mountains before we hooked the GoPro up and I was really really impressed. Unfortunately we got behind some slower traffic here. It's a beautiful 
drive, but I was getting so frustrated here falling behind some of these uh, slower drivers. felt super nimble. Uh, it was really, really stable. I didn't feel the rear end wanting to kick out at all, uh, even with traction control off. The sway bars in combination with the wide tires really made a huge difference. She sounds so good. I was really, really happy with the exhaust. With the car sounding super good and being so responsive with the sway bars and these nice tires uh, and a nice low center of gravity, it was just an amazing trip to the mountains. Again, I think it's the rotors that are the weak point. The pads that I'm using um, seem aggressive enough um, and I was pretty confident entering some corners but I could tell after some really aggressive cornering that the rotors were getting some uneven heating patterns uh, causing a little bit of a vibration. out there a little bit uh, with traction control off just having a little bit of fun but uh, the sway bars really really did exactly what they're supposed to do the car felt really planted uh, really flat uh, there was no weird uh, like semi truck trailer tr uh, trailing uh, the rear end just followed right along it was, it was awesome left to a hard right turn, the car felt uh, really good, really planted, I know that's a cool word I keep using, but it's the best way to describe it, there was no body roll or anything of that nature, it just felt literally like the car was on rails, I've always wanted to use that term with the car that I, that I was driving, uh, but that's the best way to describe it really, it just, it was so smooth uh, in transition, I, I, I couldn't be happier. I have to say that I'm really impressed with these Lexani tires and how well they've handled the abuse. Um, for an inexpensive tire, they've worn really well and they're actually really grippy. I will say in some of the steep downhill corners, I did seem to be pushing the front tires to their limit of grip, however, but no complaints overall. A really impressive tire for the price. That massive sway bar in the front of the car, I'm sure, made up for some of the deficiencies of the tire, uh, but nonetheless. Here's some of the footage I'm not super happy with, but we'll take a look at it. You get some idea of some of these kind of transitional turns from left to right um, and how, you know, I wasn't being super aggressive, but was able to take some speed into the corners um, with that additional confidence that the Hotchkiss sway bars inspires.
hopefully those flashes of sun aren't giving you a seizure yet. Enough of that nonsense, let's see if I can get you some crackles. several trips to the mountains with this car over the last several months in stock form uh, with upgraded tires uh, then with suspension work done and now with sway bars uh, the combination I would say is fantastic um, but I will say that the sway bars had the most impact overall by far uh, certainly the run flat tires are junk um, and in cool conditions we really couldn't push the car hard at all um, although they were relatively stable they got torn up and if you saw some of my uh, uh, videos way way back you'll see you would have seen some of the damage done to those tires after one single trip to the mountains um, getting upgraded tires made a huge difference lowering the car made a huge difference um, in combination with the tires especially it basically eliminated all body roll so there's a lot more control of the car um, but adding these sway bars was a whole nother level uh, before one kind of visual that comes to my head is a semi truck or you know it's a tractor trailer when the semi turns a corner that trailer follows behind that's how the car used to drive uh, but once that, these sway bars were added it was like the car was one finally uh, the rear end was just reacted immediately with a steering wheel it felt like it almost felt like the wheelbase was shorter uh, it felt like the car was much more compact just you know initiating a corner that rear end was right there um, taking corners at speed although the car is really really heavy um, and the tires are not by any means a top of the line tire it felt like those front tires were biting right in uh, and taking that corner aggressively and reacting to my steering wheels every move so I really really couldn't be more impressed I've said it before but I'll say it again for a modification under $500 these Hotchkiss sway bars are by far the best bang for your buck everybody's chasing horsepower numbers but you have to remember the supporting modifications are sometimes just as important if not more important um, if you can't put the power to the ground effectively then the power really is useless uh, so the, what these sway bars do is allow you to maximize performance essentially you're making a bunch of power um, but they allow you that stability that is required to use that power uh, going in and out of corners in you know the canyons or in the mountains or on the autocross track so i'm really excited uh, to continue the upgrades hopefully we can get some coilovers installed this winter and really dial in the suspension of this car um, upgrade tires as well you know we're going to run the hell out of these lexanis through uh, the fall um, and when springtime comes around and we get ready for autocross, we're going to have to upgrade them. I'm, you know, I might run uh, one, one uh, event with them and see how they do. Um, but, you know, we want to uh, make sure we're doing well and we're, we're running the right type of equipment. So uh, a bunch of stuff to come. I know the video is getting long already, but I just wanted to touch briefly because I did mention it. I think the weak point is the rotors. I've talked a lot about upgrading brakes to the big brake kit. Uh, I'm still considering it however I don't know that I'm gonna be able to fit them with my current wheel setup and I'm not sure that I want to drop any more money on wheels at this point um, I really think the stock calipers are pretty sufficient actually and I have an aggressive pad 
and I really want to give the pad an opportunity to prove itself, basically. The weak point really is the rotors. Uh, you can tell under aggressive braking that they develop some um, you know, inconsistency, inconsistencies in heating of the rotor surface, so it gives you that a little bit of vibration. Some people call it warp. Uh, I don't think the rotors are actually warping, but you, you can feel um, the brake basically pulsing as it hits those hot spots in the rotor. So we're gonna get some slotted rotors, uh, hopefully they're a little bit lighter weight, um, hopefully they stay a little cooler a little bit longer, um, and you know we'll get the, the braking situation figured out. If that isn't an improvement, we'll consider going up to the big brakes, but um, you know, good stuff to come, so stick around. Thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the video, and don't forget to let me know what your favorite modification is so far and why it was your favorite. Um, but thank you guys, as always, for watching. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for the subscription. 3,000 subscribers by January 1st. I know we can hit it. Thank you guys very much. I'll say it one more time. Thanks again. See you in the next video.